Hey, welcome everybody. Today we are going to take a look at the Spitfire, as I promised. So, um, I've been uh, a little bit worried about the balance in the game. Uh, so, uh, after the patch 4.3, I had the impression that it's maybe a little bit too easy for the 109. Uh, because in the first few uh, sessions that I played, when the patch first came out, I had tons and tons of victories. I even had one sortie where I had uh, close to 10 uh, kills in a single mission or a single sortie. And uh, yeah, this is a little bit strange. Um, and uh, now I decided uh, to give uh, the Spitfire a try. And um, before the patch 4.3, for example, on Dogfight server, AX Dogfight, for example, uh, most of the time I prefer to play the Spitfire, just because it's uh, more intu intuitively, and sh uh, if you just want some quick action and some intense dogfights, um, the Spitfire most of the time on a Dogfight server, for example, was very much fun. But uh, after the uh, patch 4.3, uh, I hadn't uh, very much success with the Spitfire, so uh, I now decided to to uh, learn the Spitfire again a little bit. This year, by the way, this guy doing this <laughs> this stuff here, this is Troutloft. He's going to be uh, flying with me in this sortie, and um, yeah, we'll take a look at the Spitfire now. I've decided to uh, make some tutorials for it now. And uh, of course, I'm not the best and experienced uh, Spitfire pilot, but since there are nearly no tutorials or no uh, videos regarding the Spitfire, I think uh, um, it's better than nothing. <laughs> Even if I'm not uh, the best Spitfire pilot, I at least I know everything from the uh, 109 perspective. And also, uh, in general, I can give you some very good tips, I think. Um, Let's start with the cockpit um, for the newer pilots, stuff that they maybe might not know. The first important thing is right here. This is the uh, British uh, equivalent of the uh, slip ball in the 109. So uh, this little uh, arrow right here uh, should be in the middle if you want to fly energy efficiently. This upper thing of this instrument shows you if you are flying coordinated and this lower thing right here shows you your horizontal positioning so this is uh, kind of an artificial horizon down here not really but kind of you can use it as it is if it, as if it was one and uh, the upper thing here is the thing that shows you if you're flying energy efficiently um, to the uh, Left, we got the uh, airspeed indicator and the altitude indicator, of course. Um, the artificial horizon, so <laughs> yeah, here we even got a real artificial horizon. And uh, the next really important thing next to the slip wall is uh, the boost mechanism in this plane. Right now, you see that I'm uh, ha flying with about 80% throttle. If I would uh, push my uh, real throttle that I have in front of me on the table all the way to the top, so all the way in front. If I would give full throttle um, in this plane, the throttle would go uh, up to maybe about this position right here. And there would still be some space left. And this is because of this uh, little red uh, thing here behind the throttle. This is some kind of a placeholder. And only if you push this placeholder back, you can give full throttle. And this is uh, what you uh, call boost in the Spitfire. So flying with boost in the Spitfire means that you are actually giving 100% throttle. And to give 100% throttle you need to push this uh, little placeholder here back, flip it over and you will see this later on and then you have a little bit more power but uh, you can only fly with this boost for uh, a few minutes. So you just in very typical situations uh, want to uh, use this boost for a short amount of time and um, this can make the difference between uh, a dead and a living British pilot. So um, today we're going to take a look at this mission right here on the ATEC server. This is a, a mission near the Isle of Wight. I think the Isle of Wight should be over there. 
yeah that's the Isle of Wight right there and uh, over here we got uh, some ships and the British uh, British Spitfires and Hurricanes uh, are here to protect those ships from the Germans which are going to attack them so um <coughs> Now I'm going to uh, argue a little bit uh, about some uh, some general stuff. So uh, in the Spitfire, as I said uh, before, um, you have uh, most of the time more of the passive role. But um, there's a little difference between uh, just uh, accepting the passive role and uh, using it in the right way. Because um, it's it's just like that. If you are in a passive situation in the Spitfire, this is not a big problem for you. If you are in the passive situation as a 109, you are pretty much screwed. And this doesn't mean that you have to fly in the passive situation all the time when flying a Spitfire. Uh, I want to say it like that. For example, if a 109 has an altitude advantage over you and you are in a Spitfire, it doesn't mean that you are screwed. The other way around it's pretty uh, pretty bad. So if you ha if you don't have the energy advantage in a 109, you are pretty much uh, fucked. Uh, in the Spitfire, um, this is where it gets really interesting and where the most interesting use of the Spitfire happens. But this doesn't mean that you have to be in this position. And very often, I s I see very many uh, British pilots just accepting the passive role from the start. Um, there is not much trouble to get some altitude first before getting into the fighting zone and um, right here on this server for example the mission just started I'm uh, getting some altitude the Spitfire climbs slower but uh, this doesn't mean that you cannot climb up higher so you are not forced to stay in low altitudes and um, this is something uh, where I'm always surprised that many uh, British uh, pilots do not really want to climb higher. Um, there's nothing that speaks against it because having some energy to spare is never a bad thing. And if you have the energy advantage over a 109, he's going to be forced to fly very very good if he wants to survive. Because then you have everything speaking for you. You have the turning ability and the energy. So uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, very easy then. So if you want to get re very very easy victories in the Spitfire, just get some altitude first. Um, the next important thing is, you got to understand that this plane does not perform extremely well in vertical maneuvers, but this doesn't mean that you cannot use vertical maneuvers. Um, in many situations, uh, I see Spit Spitfire pilots or Hurricane pilots turning on the flat surface all the time they are turning and turning and turning often even in the same direction all the time and this is also a very big mistake there's no rule that tells you that you only have to turn even if it is a turning plane you can uh, climb and dive and you can combine uh, vertical uh, movement together with horizontal movement so if you turn try to climb while turning and then fall down again you know it's just more energy efficiently this has just something to do with physics um, yeah, this is pretty much uh, the basic stuff that I want to tell you right now. You are uh, in a turn p turning plane, but this doesn't mean that you cannot use some physics tricks in order to uh, maintain your energy a little bit better. Uh, and then the next thing, a very important thing is to fight where you are strongest and where the enemy is weak. The Spitfire is a lot stronger in turning, that's for sure. but um, the 109 is very strong at climbing. So if a 109 extends away from you and climbs, it's a big mistake to try to follow this vertical maneuver. Um, you can stay behind him on a two-dimensional... Uh, if, you, if you look at the whole thing from, from the top, so imagine you were looking at the whole thing. For example, when I open when I open the map, oh, I cannot open the map right here. Imagine you would uh, look at the uh, scenery, at the uh, situation, at the dogfight from 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 up above. So 
you have a two-dimensional uh, image. Um, you cannot always stay directly behind him on his altitude, but you want to stay two-dimensionally behind him. Don't waste all your energy in trying to climb and get very slow, but stay behind him and below him. This forces him into a little bit more pressure situation and he cannot concentrate on flying energy efficiently because he's worried about you. He will see you below him, behind him and uh, yeah, we will get to this just later. Right here we got the first enemy and uh, this guy has more or less the same energy as I do and uh, he's screwed. In, in a situation like that, if I do not do a mistake and if he doesn't fly perfectly, he is pretty much screwed. Uh, in, in addition to that, he has multiple enemies right here. He uh, did not really think about a good angle to attack <laughs> or picking a good target and he's right in the middle and getting swarmed right now. On top of that, he's doing typical mistakes. And in the Spitfire you get uh, most of the time one of the two uh, situations. Either the fight for you is going to be extremely, extremely hard or it's going to be extremely easy. And right here we have an extremely easy situation. Right here, for example, he is now diving. If he, sh if he would have continued to dive away, he would have been safe. Uh, and he's doing the mistake of climbing up and turn too early so I can catch up right here and what you want to do, you f want to fly extremely hot when you're flying the Spitfire so think about where he's going to be in a few seconds and fly there don't fly directly at him you only, you al always want to catch the corner so for example when, when the enemy right now he's turning to the left or now he's turning to the right, that's a good I'm waiting for a good situation Right now he's turning to the right, so I want to fly ab around here. I'm not flying directly at him, I'm flying overly hot. So imagine where he's going to be and always uh, try to uh, get a shortcut on him. This is the way that you can catch up to a, to a guy, even if he's flying faster than you. And right now he's getting swarmed by lots of people. And I've decided to uh, not engage him anymore just watching the situation a little bit in case anything happens but this is also uh, a thing that I've realized very many British pilots they just ignore how many people are on one, uh, 109 and just everybody wants to get a piece of it and there's no rule that says uh, <laughs> that it has to be three Spitfires on one 109 and you're making yourself vulnerable if you are following somebody directly and uh, are not keeping your eyes open. Of course, I'm not. I'm not uh, ignoring this here totally, but I'm not staying on his tail now. When there are three other Spitfires trying to do the same thing, and they are nearly uh, ramming each other, firing, shoulder shooting, uh, making friendly damage, friendly fire, and all that stuff. You know, he's he's screwed anyways. This is a big uh, thing in the 109 in the Spitfire. You don't have a lot of ammunition. Well, you have a lot of ammunition, but you don't have a lot of time, a long time to squeeze the trigger. This ammunition fires so fast out of these eight guns that it's going to be used up pretty quickly. So uh, if you see a 109 trailing like he does, there's no real reason to continue to pursue him. Of course you don't want to get into a vulnerable position and ignore him completely, but uh, he's screwed. He won't make it home anyways. If a 109 has this damage to the radiator and you see this liquid coming out of these two uh, these two coolers, these radiators, he's going to have maybe three, maybe four minutes of continued flying. After that his engine is going to stop and this guy, for example, he's not going to make it home anyways. So there's no big reason to uh, waste my time and my ammunition on him now and make myself uh, vulnerable again. So, uh, where did I stop? So the first important thing is you have to understand how to catch up to somebody and this is pretty easy. Just uh, look where he is going and don't uh, have your nose directly on him but a little bit more further there where he is going to be. Um, the next important thing that I wanted to say before is staying below and behind him rather than uh, f trying to force yourself 
directly behind him on his altitude. So if he's extending and climbing away from you, for example, it's a mistake to follow this climb. Then you are getting onto his strength and you are trying to fight him where he is strongest. This is something that you don't want to do. You want to fight the you want to have the fight happening on your terms and not on his. And uh, what you want to do in this situation is, like I described, you stay behind him but below him. You keep your speed and you climb at a lot shallower angle than he does, always worrying that he might in, at any time turn around, make some kind of a... Um, how is it called? Uh, some kind of a hammerhead turn. So he pulls up very hard, gets very slow, then he turns around and falls down on you. And if you are in this situation directly below and behind him, he's having a bad angle and you are going to have the advantage of speed. Then you can make a turn and in combination with having some speed left, you are able to survive. And then it's going to get into a game of patience. You are staying where you are strongest, he is staying where he is strongest and who is going to fuck up? first is going to get the first hits. Um, you will see this later on. I'm going to skip this out a little bit, make this a little bit faster. I might... Uh, I've got uh, another... Uh, yesterday I fought a very good and very long fight against the 109. I've recorded this also, maybe I'm going to make a video about that too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing too many videos, as you probably realized. Uh, most of the time I don't have the time for that. I'm very sorry about that, but uh, I hope you can understand. So, uh, what do we have here? This is the uh, the other 109 I was killing in this session. This is, once again, uh, this is not a very interesting thing. Uh, he is uh, more or less oblivious to everything around him and uh, I'm just boom and zooming him boom and zooming somebody in the Spitfire of course works too but you gotta be very careful if somebody realizes that you are attacking and uh, dives away from you does some vertical turns and you turn uh, with him in directly vertical turns you, you might lose the, the energy advantage that you had this guy, for example, I shot at him and I hit him before, but he didn't even realize. And now he has some radiated damage. And, um, yeah, I've been using about one and a half, maybe two seconds of squeezing the trigger on him. I got 14 seconds uh, in total. So, uh, right now, I'm just giving him a few more shots. A few last hits, he's diving down. And now is there's no reason to pursue him any, any longer. I'm just letting him go now. He won't make it home anyways. So there I got a victory. And I could have been uh, now following him, making myself vulnerable, maybe to somebody who is going to help him. Um, big tip. If you see him trailing, just let him go. There's no reason uh, to pr continue to pursue him. You are getting going to get this kill. He's going to uh, make a water landing or bailout. You finished him even without finishing him. Uh, time is going to finish him now. And this is of course the big weakness of the 109, uh, that it's so vulnerable to damage. And um, yeah, since you don't got a lot of ammunition, there's no reason to waste it now. So uh, it's going to get interesting. In just a moment we are going to get uh, the uh, situation of having a very difficult fight. And uh, for example, uh, just one thing. Um, it really depends on your altitude too. Right here I'm in the Spitfire 1A 100 octane and you got to know in which plane you're in. Uh, the 100 octane uh, plane, the 1A for example, is very good at very low altitudes, uh, at a level flight for example, in a low altitude, but also in very high altitudes. Uh, and it's something that you always got to know. Uh, what kind of plane am I using right now? And uh, where does it perform strongest? Um, like I said, for example, for the one, 100 Octane 1A, it's very strong uh, 
on the deck in a leveled flight and it's very strong in higher altitudes and this is b important because before I said you do not want to follow a climb this changes with the al altitude but by the way right here we got another enemy and at first I thought this was the guy that I wounded before but it's uh, a, n a new, a fresh one, another one so I do not want to get passive you always want to fly as hot as possible so you are always keeping your nose on the enemy but not directly directly at him but cutting the corner and staying below him right here you see that I'm not directly trying to uh, climb up to him but I'm trying to stay fast he's now diving away extending a little bit and then he's going to climb building up additional energy what he does best and there's no uh, this is not uh, yeah that's the right way to do it in the 109 now I'm not following his turn I'm not following his climb I'm showing him that I'm not fighting on his terms I'm just turning away from him and seeing what he does and this was a good choice because there was a second 109 and if I would have continued to follow him I would have been very vulnerable and now it's getting really interesting this guy is going to attack me soon so I'm changing my curse just slightly waiting for the good time for the good moment and now it's about time I should do something <laughs> just changing slightly it's doing a split S turning as hard as I can and he cannot he cannot uh, come with me and I think I didn't lose him when I was actually flying so here another thing opening the canopy is a very useful thing when you are worried about somebody behind you um, you just have the ability to hear him in addition when he's very close and especially when I'm up against multiple uh, enemies I'm always opening this canopy and then we got the one and then we got the second one I'm staying fast and always at the right time I'm turning towards him and to his belly side this is a very important thing we will see this later on t again so here we are once again in the typical situation he's climbing up I'm not climbing directly with him but below him staying behind him giving him a bad angle now I know exactly that he's going to get slower and slower there you see the, uh, the little uh, stripes he's turning towards me now I'm changing and pulling towards his belly side this means that in this situation where I'm pulling towards his belly side he will have me disappearing behind his nose and it's going to get very difficult for him to uh, to aim at me so uh, this uh, requires some 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 uh, training or some some feeling that you need to a achieve and always take a look behind you waiting for the second uh, 109 to attack me once again I'm below and behind him we are at about uh, I guess close to 5,000 meters right here he's trying to disappear in the sun which is a very good strategy once again giving some kind of a head-on situation where I'm pulling towards his belly side and gain some additional speed by turning down and having the patience to do this over and over and over again is what decides if you are winning in this difficult situation you saw there were two 109s the one already gave up on me I'm not sure where he is and this 109 is forced to fight with me because I'm pursuing him and before I said that it's sometimes very important to know what altitude you are at right now we are getting quite high and um, <coughs> he in his uh, E4, um, he will lose a lot of manifold pressure in this higher altitudes. This doesn't necessarily mean that he immediately loses uh, the uh, the power of his engine, but I have a 100 octane plane, and um, the higher we get, the more advantage I get. Again, um, but if he were maybe one kilometer or two kilometers lower, he would perform a lot better than me. But right here. The higher he climbs, the more vertical stuff he's trying to uh, apply, the more difficult it's going to get for him. 
for example, if he wants to do vertical turns, he's going to get too slow. If he uh, tries to climb, he's not climbing as fast away from me as before, and stuff like that. So uh, the higher you get, the more directly you can uh, pursue him. And you don't uh, have to really use this uh, analogy of staying behind him on a two-dimensional level, you know. Um, right here, once again, I'm not directly following him. I'm, uh, I'm cutting the corner. Now he's doing the uh, vertical turn. And right here you begin to see that his advantage gets uh, less and less. He's doing the vertical turn and we are still on same energy level. I just pursued him now and from now on if he continues to fly with this strategy he's going to have a big problem uh, because everything that's going to happen if he does that right here we're going to get again and again into head-on situations and um, like I said for example if you see here I'm not just turning on the horizontal way I'm not doing a real Immelmann maneuver but I'm climbing while, t uh, while turning so add in a little bit of uh, vertical stuff into your maneuvers. This just maintains your energy better as uh, if you just turn on a flat surface. Um, once again he's doing, uh, he did the Immelmann turn, he's coming towards me again and I even get an energy advantage over him right here. I'm not sure if he is uh, doing it very poorly or what the reasoning is. Maybe we are high enough already but um, he's not above me anymore. And if this happens in the Spitfire, you can be very happy. And especially uh, if he's starting to maneuver very abruptly and uh, losing uh, his nerves are going to get to him, um, then you have as good as one in the Spitfire. And uh, on top of that, what he's doing right here, he's trying to uh, stay vertical and he thinks he should get an advantage over me but not in this altitude anymore. So uh, we are now getting into add-on situations and in the Spitfire you do not really want to... Uh, you, you know, a head-on situation is not the worst thing in the world in, in the Spitfire against the 109 because uh, chances are that uh, you can take some punishment but he can't. As long as you do not ram him or he gets a very lucky uh, pilot kill or something like this um, well, in a situation like that, in a Spitfire head-on situation, I will take the head-on any time. Um, because I just know the chances are on my side. And there, something fell off of his plane. And we saw why you do not really want to be in a head-on situation as a 109 pilot. Yeah, he's tumbling down now. And this was it. So I've even got more typical and better footage of uh, these difficult scenarios of fighting. But it comes down to uh, a few rules that you want to follow. For example, uh, do not really follow a dive. Stay in the altitude. Uh, gain some altitude first before the engagement. It takes you much longer to gain altitude, so you've got to think about that first. Maybe it's a good idea to stay away from the from the uh, fighting zone. Don't spawn directly uh, in the fighting zone. <coughs> For example, on many maps you have uh, a fight happening over Hawkinge. Don't spawn at Hawkinge. Uh, spawn at Manson or something like that. Spawn somewhere where the enemy isn't above you and will directly attack you when you are vulnerable and on the deck. Um, so, gain some altitude. Do not follow dives directly. Uh, try to cut the corner whenever you can, fly as hot as possible, get pressure on the enemy whenever you can, and uh, do it on the two-dimensional level. If you cannot really climb with him, at least stay below and behind him. Then wait for the perfect time to uh, perform, wait for the perfect time to perform evasive maneuvers, and I will do another video about that, uh, I promise you that, where I go I'm going to show you uh, a little bit better and give you uh, something like a step for a step by step uh, tutorial where you can really see uh, what you have to do um, and if you do everything perfectly in the in the Spitfire um, I had to revise my statement from before so uh, 
I flew the the last few days uh, a lot of Spitfire, and at first I thought that uh, the game was a little bit imbalanced. It was too difficult for the uh, Spitfire. But uh, I have to revise that statement. I think it's pretty balanced. Um, it's just a little bit different. In the patch 4.0, for example, it was just a little bit. It was very easy. If you remember, in the patch 4.0, the um, the compression effect on the on the surface of the wings, which blocked your control devices, uh, which made you extremely unmaneuverable at higher airspeeds, uh, has been a little bit reduced. On top of that, uh, the uh, roll rate of the 109 has been increased. This together means that uh, you have to put in a lot more effort if you want to successfully evade an attack of a 109. Uh, before the patch of 4.3, you could be very lazy about that. Uh, the slightest, or not the slightest, but just doing a little bit of a hard turn, combining it with a little bit of a split S, and the 109 had absolutely no chance to hit you. If you did it at the right time and you weren't too slow. Uh, right now, you have to be really making sure that you are fast enough. That's point number one. And point number two, you have to really pull into the right direction. Because if you pull somewhere where he can pull too. So for example, if I would be at right now in a 109 and in front of me I would have a Spitfire. Um, he would see me falling down on him and he would pull somewhere right here. So he would make a curse like this to the left. I could pull myself into his pull and make a deflection shot. If I'm very good and I have a lot of feeling for shooting, I have a good chance of hitting him even if it's difficult. But if this uh, imagined Spitfire would be turning down here, then I had to push in order to hit him and he would disappear behind my nose and this is what you want to do. So uh, not only uh, having the speed but also pulling into the right direction is very important and it's not just uh, just pulling will save you any time of the day. Uh, you have to really think about how you do it now. So it's gotten a little bit more difficult and uh, yeah, so at first it seemed very imbalanced, but if you know what to do, you can uh, achieve the same thing as before, and I think it's balanced. Um, yeah, I will give you some additional uh, Spitfire tutorials in the future, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope this one helped you a little bit, and I'm going to skip this way home here. By the way, here's another here's another formation of a German bomber and a 109. But uh, I just wanted to make sure if this 109 is going to attack me or not. I think they were attacking an airfield or something like this. And uh, yeah, I only got yeah. This is another thing. Right here, you have, you have in the Spitfire you have two fuel tanks, and uh, it doesn't show the right. Th Thing, but I just only had uh, about five gallons of fuel left here, so I had to go at home. <sighs> yeah, and uh, the landing for itself uh, is also a little bit different. I'm performing this landing right here as if it, I was in a 109. Normally, uh, if you fly in the Spitfire, you want to uh, approach the airfield at a steeper angle and uh, use your flaps <coughs> to uh, drain some energy and then at the last point in time, just shortly before uh, you are above the runway, you uh, insert the flaps again and more or less fall down and perform a three-point landing. This is not what I'm doing right here because I'm not used to this. I'm just landing this thing as if it was a 109 at a very low angle, very shallow uh, approach and make a two-point landing and then drain some speed before I touch down with the tailwheel. And uh, yeah, this is how you want to do it in the 109. Normally in a Spitfire you would do it a little bit different. But yeah, my, my uh, hours of experience in the Spitfire, I don't have even... I think I don't have even 100 hours of experience in the Spitfire. So take all my advice with a grain of salt but I think it's better than uh, no advice at all. And since I didn't see anybody doing a real tutorial for the one on, uh, for the Spitfire, I think uh, 
yeah, I will do it. And uh, at least I know a lot about the other perspective, and it's good for me too to uh, learn something about the enemy. And it's always a good thing to understand the enemy too. And for everybody who has some problems, if anybody says uh, flying in the Spitfire is too hard, flying in the 109 is too easy, yeah, then fly in the 109 for a time, and we will see how good you are going to be. So, this was a self-elected ape of the year. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.